Dear students, welcome to my video lecture. In this video, I am covering session 8 on sequences for 5th semester BSc of University of Mysore. I am going to cover the following concepts in this video. Nature of the sequence, this one, 1 plus 1 by n whole to the n and other one is nature of the sequence x to the n where x is a number. So what are the prerequisites <coughs> for this video? So you need to have the idea of definition of sequences, definition of monotonic sequences, properties of monotonic sequences and the binomial expansion using binomial theorem. Let us consider the first one. Discuss the nature of the sequence 1 plus 1 by n whole to the n. So let us take the nth term of the sequence xn is equal to 1 plus 1 by n whole to the n. So here we shall use binomial expansion to expand the RHS. So after expansion you will get like this. You recall the binomial expansion and you can expand like this. Okay. And after simplification of this nc1, nc2 and all, you can get this. Same thing I have written here. Okay. So again after simplification on right hand side, you will get this result. So this is your xn. Now you can obtain xn plus 1 just by replacing n with n plus 1 in this above result. Okay. So like this we got xn plus 1. So we have simply replaced n by n plus 1 in the above result that is xn. So we got xn plus 1. So this is the result of xn plus 1. You can simply go through this. Now, so we know this result n plus 1 is greater than n for any natural number n. See if you take the reciprocal on both sides simply the inequality reverses that is 1 by n plus 1 is less than 1 by n. If you take negative sign on both sides again inequality reverses like this and you can write this result 1 minus of 1 by n plus 1 is greater than 1 minus of 1 by n and you can generalize this result like this in general 1 minus k by n plus 1 is greater than 1 minus k by n. What is k? For any k like 2, 3, 4 up to n minus 1, you can analyze this. So now, just by observing the above results, we have seen each term after the second term of xn plus 1 is greater than the corresponding term of xn that you can observe. So from this, we can write xn plus 1 is greater than xn for all n belongs to n in general. Hence, this yields the sequence xn is monotonic increasing. So once we got this result, next thing is to verify whether this sequence is bounded above. I mean whether upper bound exists or not. Let us see this. This is what the xn we have got okay the same xn has been written here in the simplified form and here look into this rhs in this equality becomes inequality that is less than or equal to this is because you observe this reason the third term of xn in the first result is less than or is equal to 1 by 2 factorial that is the third term of this new result. Similarly, the corresponding terms if you observe like this, it is less than, you can verify and like this <coughs> in general. Therefore, we have written this inequality. Still, if you move further, this e less than or equal to becomes less strictly less than because of this reason. See here, 1 by 2 factorial is less than 1 by 2, 1 by 3 factorial is less than 1 by 2 square, that is 1 by 4. Similarly, 1 by n factorial is less than 1 by 2 to the n minus 1, that you can verify. So, we have written this. <coughs> now, 
Look into this. Uh, just by leaving the first term, consider the remaining terms. This is in the form of geometric progression. Of course, this is like sum of first n terms of GP. You recall the general uh, form of GP, Sn, that is the sum of first n terms of GP. The GP is A, R, R square till A, R to the n minus 1. And this is the known result. Sn is equal to A into 1 minus R to the n divided by 1 minus R. If you use this idea, you can write the RHS like this. 1 has been kept as it is and this <coughs> GP part has been written in this form using the standard idea. And here A is 1 and R is 1 by 2. So after simplification, you get this, still further simplify, after simplification, you end up with this. That is, Xn is less than 3 for all n belongs to n. This means the sequence Xn is bounded above by 3. Okay. So we have climbed Xn is monotonic increasing and bounded above. Okay. Therefore, Xn being monotonic increasing and bounded above, it is convergent using your previous idea. <coughs> now, Xn is also bounded below by its first term. That also you can observe. If you find X1, so and you observe every term is greater than, every term is greater than 2. Okay. Xn is greater than 2 in general. So, we can write any term of the sequence Xn is lying between 2 and 3 in general. So, this means if you take the limit of this sequence that is Xn, limit of Xn that is limit of 1 plus 1 by n whole to the n, it must lie between 2 and 3 and this has been taken as E that is the exponential constant. So, what do we conclude from this? Limit of 1 plus 1 by n whole to the n is equal to E is the result. Now, we shall come to the second one. Discuss the nature of the sequence x to the n where what is x? It is any real number. So, to discuss the nature, let us take xn is equal to x to the n that is uh, the general notation we have used where x is any real number. So, to cover this x, we shall consider three different cases of x. One is mod x less than 1 and mod x is equal to 1 and mod x greater than 1 so that it covers all real numbers. First case is mod x less than 1. This means x lying between minus 1 and plus 1, excluding the endpoints. So, this is what we are going to consider now. If x is equal to 0, so here in between minus 1 and plus 1, we have two further uh, subcases. x is 0 case and x is not equal to 0 case. If x is equal to 0, then x power n is obviously 0. So, if you take the limit of this, limit of this x power n is 0. And from this, by the definition of limit of a sequence, I mean convergence of a sequence, you can conclude x to the n, the sequence is convergent when x is equal to 0. Now, let us take the other subcase, x is not equal to 0. Then obviously, mod x is also non-zero. And if you take 1 by mod x, obviously that is greater than 1. When x is not equal to 0, it must be positive. 1 by mod x will be greater than 0. Oh sorry, greater than 1. Now, 1 by mod x is equal to 1 plus h. Because it is greater than 1, 1 plus some positive number. 1 plus h, where h is some positive number, real number. So, that implies mod x is equal to 
1 by 1 plus h after taking the if you simply take the reciprocal you get this mod x is this and this implies if you take power if you raise the power to n x to the n is equal to 1 by 1 plus h whole to the n here again you can use binomial expansion to expand the denominator of rhs so you can get this using the previous idea so you can expand like this this is by using binomial expansion now after further simplification of this nc1 nc2 and all you get this okay so obviously you can verify this rhs uh, in the equality case will be less than 1 by n by 1 by nh that means the modulus of x to the n is less than 1 by nh for any n so now let us take 1 by nh is less than epsilon where epsilon is some positive number okay this implies if you take the reciprocal nh that will be greater than 1 by epsilon here inequality reverses after taking the reciprocal this implies n is greater than 1 by h into epsilon okay that implies modulus of x to the n is less than epsilon for all n after 1 by h epsilon 1 by h epsilon here here we shall choose a number small m as the nearest positive integer and less than 1 by h epsilon if you choose like this then we can write this modulus of x to the n is less than epsilon for all n after m after that m so this can be written like this this x to the n can be written as x to the n minus 0 and using the definition of limit so what do you write limit of this xn is 0 limit of xn is zero again you can conclude the sequence xn converges to zero when x is not equal to zero these two sub cases can be clubbed and you can write the sequence x to the n is convergent when mod x is less than one that is x lies between minus one and plus one now come to case two where mod x is equal to one this means x is 1 or x is minus 1. Let us take these two cases separately. If x is equal to 1, then the given sequence x to the n can be written as 1 to the n. This implies limit of x to the n is obviously 1. Once you get the limit, you can conclude the sequence xn is convergent and converges to 1 in this particular case that is when x is equal to 1 now if x is equal to minus 1 then this x to the n can be written as minus 1 to the n and here if you find the limit you will get this result if n is even the limit will be 1 if n is odd the limit will be minus 1 here the limit is not unique but find it but find it so what do you conclude the sequence x to the n is oscillatory i mean it oscillates finitely between 1 and minus 1 when x is equal to minus 1 so now we shall come to third case when mod x is greater than 1 this means x is greater than 1 and x is less than minus 1 if x is greater than 1 take y is equal to 1 by x okay this is small uh, modification we have made y is equal to 1 by x so this implies mod x i mean mod y is equal to 1 by mod x and this will be less than 1 because mod x is greater than 1 1 by mod x will be less than 1 this implies mod y is less than 1 okay so we have simply used the variable y here okay now using the first case case 1 where mod x is less than 1 okay 
so by case 1 you can conclude y to the n the sequence y to the n converges to 0 okay here y to the n converges to 0 then what about x to the n if that means limit of y to the n is equal to 0 it means limit of 1 by y to the n is equal to infinity okay this limit is infinity what is 1 by y to the n this is nothing but x to the n so from this y we have got the result of this x limit of x to the n is infinity once it is infinity limit is infinity that is positive infinity you can conclude the sequence x to the n is divergent when x is greater than 1 now what happens to the limit when x is less than minus 1 you can simply go through this okay when x is less than minus 1 you can take x is equal to some minus uh, any p something like that okay and you can continue and clearly you will end up with this result the sequence oscillates infinitely <coughs> between plus infinity and minus infinity in this case when x is equal to i mean less than minus 1 so you can conclude like this x to the n the sequence oscillates between minus infinity and plus infinity when x less than minus 1 so you can club all these cases and give the conclusion the sequence x to the n is convergent when x is lying between minus 1 and uh, not exactly like this minus 1 less than <coughs> x less than or equal to plus 1 okay here it is convergent you can club the above cases and it is divergent when x is greater than 1 and it oscillates in two cases when x is less than minus 1 and also equal to minus 1 yes this is the conclusion Thank you very much.